Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of, you, some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of When Stars Fall. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> I don't need any. With that, he picked up his pace and rejoined the group. Well, with an attitude like that, you're not going to make any. We continued down the same hall, passing classroom after classroom, and it seemed endless and impossible to have so many large rooms in one hall. There were rooms with desks and chairs, some with books on shelves that reached from floor to ceiling, some rooms with weapons and armor, some with strange glowing tools and large contraptions. The more I saw, the more I wanted to know more about each major. Ember had Ember had been given some short descriptions Ember had been Ember had given some short descriptions on each room and which major used them as we passed by, but I still wanted to know more. One room in particular caught my eye. It was a relatively small room with a simple door on the outside. Inside of the room I could see only a couple of tables with small glowing tools like one of the other rooms. The tools looked somehow different, though. More worn. More worn. In the center of the room was a single wooden pedestal with a large black book hovering on top of it. The book was closed, but there was a faint violet glow coming from inside of it. I blinked and it was gone. Not just the book, the whole room was gone, and I was staring at a blank wall in the, out in the hallway. I glanced around to see if anyone else had seen the room, but the whole group had vanished, too. Shit! How did I manage to lose an entire group of people in a straight hallway? I rushed down the hall as fast as I could, and I could see the tail end of the group turn the corner down, the other, down another hallway. I sped up to almost, to almost a run and just barely caught up as Ember began talking about this new area. Our final stop on the tour today for today will be your dorms. There were a few excited whispers among the new students. Now, of course, the men and women will be separated into different wings for decency. Also, as first years, you will have a roommate, as there are usually two people per, per room, so be sure to get along. Each of the dorm areas will have a supervisor, someone who basically just makes sure you're not breaking any rules. It's good to stay on their good side. Also, they will be in charge of you of who you room with, and most of them will take into consideration your personal choices if you have any. I glanced over to Reth, who caught my gaze as he glared at me. I ain't sharing a room with you, newbie. I didn't ask. Whatever. I wonder if Silas already has a roommate. Orion also seemed to be alone since I only saw one bed. Is it because he said a second year? All right, this is the West Wing where the men stay. Your dorm supervisor should be around here somewhere, if he's not passed out drunk somewhere. Oh, hello there. Oh, -ho. looks like you brought me some fresh meat, little lamb. I turned around as a very large dragon came lumbering down the hall toward the back of the group, which of course is where I was. Seeing the hulking dragon figure that referred to us as meat come toward us, I suddenly looked around for a place to hide, just in case. If it came down to it, I'd probably use Reth as a meat shield. These are the new enrollments for the fall semester. Ember made her way effortlessly from the front from the front of the group to the back and intercepted the large dragon. You are my goddess, Ember! Though I doubted most of the group could hear, I was close enough to make out the short, whispered conversation between the two of them. You smell like booze. That's because I was drinking them, Princess. Ember sighed and placed her hands on her hips. Way to be a role model, Professor Crom. The dragon, apparently named Crom and a professor, gave a hearty laugh and Ember sighed once again and faced the group. This is the supervisor for this section of the male dormitories. Please be sure to... Prismatic... Prismatic Kaluvarax. Dorm supervisor and teacher of the Guardian courses. You can call me Krom. Krom bared his large, sharp teeth in the grin and then winked at the group. If you get on my really good side, you can call me other things, too. There were a few laughs around the group, some more nervous than others, but I heard a barely audible growl from my side. I glanced over and Breath's hackles were raised, and his face looked almost feral. I guess really, the Reth really doesn't like this guy. He noticed my stare, and then his usual bristly demeanor returned, and he just and he just gave me his usual glare, which I was getting used to. Ember cleared her throat, and then addressed the group. All right, girls, you can follow me to the better half dormitories. Boys, you can stay here and get your rooms assigned with Professor Crom. She walked through the group toward the front, and then turned to face us again. Oh, and be sure to be respectful. She smiled, but there was a sense of foreboding coming from her. Though, it felt like it was directed behind behind me toward the dragon. Crom laughed loudly again. I'll be, sh I'll be sure to take good, real good care of him, Miss Ember. She sighed and led the girls... And led the girls of the group down the hallway and disappeared around a corner. Second, y'all. Water time. Hello, handsome. It seems like almost every kind of guy that pops up in, this, in these games is like my type. <laughs> I'm such a hoe. Once the group was out of sight, Krom gave a big grin towards us. Alright, you good-looking bastards, let's get your rooms assigned nice and swift-like. Krom reached into a pocket and pulled out his pal and pressed the embedded gem. The device slid open and revealed a translucent blue screen between the metal pieces. 
The size of the device in the large dragon's hands was a bit comical, but he worked it with ease. Right. Line up. State your name and your favorite body part so I can get your rooms assigned. No one stepped forward. That was a joke. Come on, step forward and let me know if you already have a preferred roommate. The guys lined up in front of a large dragon and quickly began getting their dorms and roommates assigned, some leaving happily, some a little disappointed. Judging from the thinned out group, it looked like there were only nine new male enrollments for this semester, including myself. Breath was the last before me to get his room assigned, and he said he didn't have a roommate preference as long as it wasn't the newbie behind him. I rolled my eyes and stepped forward after he finished. Crown really did smell like the smell of booze, like Ember had said. It's quite strong, and for a moment, I wondered if it was possible to get drunk from the smell alone. And what's your name, handsome? Flirt. I'm a flirty boy. I'm Marcus Carver, and my favorite body part is your... Uh, chest. I am not being that lewd right now, my god. Chest, those pecs of yours are impressive. Ha! I like a man who knows what he likes. Maybe it lets you feel just how impressive they are. Crom clicked through his pal and found my name. Huh. It's, looks here like you haven't finished enrollment yet. Great, I can't assign your room so you're enrolled completely and have a pal. Uh, everyone else is all, uh, is all signed in, so I'm free for now. Should I escort you to the admin office, or do you have something else in mind? It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Uh, take this penis. Orion. Well, I'll go with Grom. It should be cool. Check it out. <laughs> I'd enjoy that. Thanks. Believe me, kid, it's definitely my pleasure. We walked down the halls, and from the close proximity, I could smell the booze from Crom more strongly now. I wonder how much someone would actually have to drink to smell like a walking brewery. So, how are you enjoying the academy so far, kid? It's not bad. It seems like there's a lot to get used to. That's for sure. If it isn't prying too much, how come you haven't picked a major yet? You're cutting it real close. It's a long story. Well, actually, it's pretty short. The thing is, just a couple days ago, I woke up on a field with no memories. The only thing I could remember was my name. No kidding. Nope. If Silas hadn't been on his way here, I don't know what would have happened to me. To make things even weirder, when I got here, the admin office told me I was, reg I was a registered student and that the headmaster herself approved my admission. Crom whistled. Damn. Sounds like you got yourself in a real head-scratcher of a situation. The headmaster herself, huh? Can't imagine old Hargraves going through this trouble of my, trouble unless it was for someone important. I've never really thought of myself as anyone important, at least not since waking up without my memories. Well, I hope you find what you're looking for here. And if you need to drink those troubles away at some point, I'm your guy, kid. I laughed. It was difficult to believe that I'd be, take, that I'd be talking so easily now if this massive dragon was a few minutes ago I was afraid of being eaten by him. I'll keep that in mind, Professor. We turned the corner and I could see the office just ahead. Looks like this is where I leave you for now, kid. Don't go causing any trouble. Crom waved me off, and I head into the office. I walked up to an available staff member, which happened to be the same elven woman I spoke with before. The elven woman looked up from her screen as I approached. Oh, you're back. Uh, good. So, your, um, situation got my interest piqued, and I tried to find more information while you were gone. You didn't have to, but I appreciate it a lot. What did you find? Nothing. Ah, that's unfortunate. I guess my only lead is the headmaster still. So, you know, water time. Uh, and not he, and I didn't know. Alright. Mm hmm. Alrighty. No, I mean, I found nothing, as in there are no other records either in the Academy's database or in public records of a Marcus Carver matching your description. It's like you didn't exist. So, are you secretly on the run from something, or someone? Maybe a jilted lover or someone's husband? Did you fake your own death and assume someone else's identity? The more she threw out wild guesses, the more excited she became. I don't know, but... Flashes of my dream came back to me. And then Silas's words echoed in my mind. Whatever the case may be, I doubt you're someone who would doom anyone. I don't think I'd do those things. She cleared her throat and adjusted her glasses before returning to her screen. Yes, right. Let's just get you fully registered and save the sleuthing for later. Have you decided on a major? Um, actually, they didn't really go into much detail about the majors on the tour. I guess because no one else waited till the last minute. You make a good point. Here, let's get you to, uh, attuned to your own pal first, and then I'll pull up some information on the course for you to for you to read through. The woman pulled out a small device and placed it on the counter. Please place your finger in there. I did, and not a moment later, I felt a sharp pain in my finger and pulled it back out. A small droplet of blood formed on the tip. I grabbed a nearby tissue and began to dab my finger clean. Sorry, forgot to warn you about that. We need your blood in order to attune you to your device. It's alright. She quickly worked on her device and then pulled out a familiar-looking metal plate with a blue gem. 
She inserted the PAL into her tablet device and clicked a few more times. Finally, she removed the PAL and held it out to me. I reached out and grabbed the device. Then... Oh. What the hell? Where... Where am I? Darkness and a thick fog covered the area as far as I could see in the space. H hello Not even an echo. I took a few steps forward and the fog shifted and swirled around my calves. There's solid ground here. Remember? The voice was both young and old, female and male, as if multiple people were speaking at the same time and it echoed within itself. Who's there? I spun around, but only darkness and fog were there. Then I felt actually felt a shift in the fog behind me. I spun around again and still nothing. This isn't funny! Who are you? Who are you? I'm not playing your games. I'm out of here! I picked a direction and began walking. The scenery remained unchanged as if I were only walking in place. What do you want with me? Remember. I've been trying! I've been looking for answers ever since I woke up! Do you know something about my memories? Still asleep. The light grew in the distance, breaking through the darkness and the fog. I headed towards it. As I neared the light, objects took shape, and I saw five pedestals lined up in a row. Spread across the pedestals were five luminescent objects encased in glass orbs. Ooh. Artifacts, maybe? I like a good fetch quest. Oh. Oh! Class selection! Okay! One who charges him with steel and strength, cutting out all that opposes him. One who seeks glory in battle to sever the claws of injustice. The Guardian. The stalwart defender whose shield never wavers. One who has sworn to protect and bolster his allies against the tides of evil. The Spiritualist. One who seeks to cure and mend the ailments of those around him with the aid of spirits and the divine. One whose prayers and courage should not be taken lightly. The mage, one who changes the very fabric of the world around him and seeks to acquire vast knowledge and understanding of the mystical and arcane. The rogue, one who keeps it to the shadows and strikes without mercy, whose cunning and reflexes are as sharp as his daggers. Ah, uh, one second, y'all. Water time. Alright, so we've got some important paths lined up. Okay, so I'm thinking it's either the spiritualist or the mage that I want to go with right now. Uh, let's go with the spiritualist. Can help people more that way. Something about the amulet called to me. It was like it was a whisper of light among an ocean of darkness. I reached out for it and took the orb in my hands. As I grabbed it, the other orbs vanished as if they were never there. A brilliant light flashed from the orb and blinded me. Ah! Flashbang! Hey! You alright? My vision was blurry for a moment, but I began to clear as I was back in the admin office. Can you hear me? I... It took the moment for me to feel like I had fully regained control of my body and mouth. I think so. Did you see that? See what? All I saw was you taking the pal and then spacing out after it gave off a weird flash a second ago. But the orbs and the amulet... I looked around my body, but the orb and amulet were nowhere to be, nowhere to be found. You sure are a strange one. Anyway, let's finish getting you registered. Alright, and now to assign your major. Let me just pull up the general course info in. What the... Your major's already been filled out. I know it was blank up until a moment ago, right before I gave you... May I please see your pal for a moment? I wasn't sure what I was going on, but I handed it to her. She inserted it back into her tablet and began clicking away. It's assigned here as well, and you already have some contacts in it? And your biometrics and personality have been quantified. What did you do to this? I didn't do anything, I swear. What do you mean those things have been quantified? Sorry, I don't mean to blame you. I've just never seen anything like it before. The context can be a fluke in the system, but the stats? What I mean is that the PAL took your essence, your blood, and assigned values to your physical and mental capacities. Here, it's easier if I show you. She handed me my PAL again. Anytime you want to use your PAL, you just click the small blue gem. I did as instructed. As soon as I clicked the gem, the metal plate slid apart, and there was a translucent blue screen between them with information displayed. Oh! Stats. That's okay. Alrighty. Inventory. Nothing in inventory contacts. Ryan. Oh, nice. Relationship neutral. Okay. Cool. Wrath. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call our relationship neutral. Yeah. There's Silas. Acquaintance. I'm gonna go after Silas first. Alright, y'all. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there.
Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.